All right, we're here. We're still in the June Ont 9 exam. We're on page 11. Let's see how far we can go. Question uh, 83, 84, and 85. Deal with a roller coaster that has a mass of uh, 290 kilograms. It starts from rest. Initial velocity is zero. So we've got that. And the car acquires 3.13 times 10 to the 5 joules of kinetic energy. Oh, I love these energy problems. And it descends to the bottom of a hill in 5.3 seconds. So these are uh, two pointers, so we've got to show all our work with units. Calculate the height of the hill. Show all work, including the equation substitution. Well, let's list what we know. Our mass is equal to uh, 290 kilograms. It starts from rest. Velocity initial is equal to zero. It acquires uh, a kinetic energy equal to 3.13 times 10 to the 5 joules. And it gets to the bottom of the hill in a time of 5.3 seconds. Not much of a ride, but could be exciting. Calculate the height of the hill. We want to know the height. Well, here's the scenario. you got this roller coaster thing. you got a car up at the top, and it has zero kinetic energy. We know that because its initial velocity is zero. Um, and it gains all of this kinetic energy, and as with many roller coasters, it gains it because of its potential energy. It starts at the top, and it goes down to the bottom. So all of the potential energy at the top, and they tell us, yep, neglect friction, so all of the potential energy at the top changes into kinetic energy at the bottom. Well, we know it's kinetic energy at the bottom, so we can also say that its potential energy at the top must have been equal to 3.13 times 10 to the 5 joules. Where would it have gotten that kinetic energy from? It had to get it from potential. So let's find the equation for potential energy. And it says uh, change of potential energy is equal to mg times the change in height as we drop height, we gain uh, uh, kinetic energy, and we got it from the change in uh, potential energy. So we can write that our potential energy is equal to mg times the height we started at. We want to know height, so we divide both sides of the equations by mg. So now we've got an equation for height. So we plug in 3.13 times 10 to the 5 joules. We divide by our mass, which was 290 kilograms, times g, which is the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, times 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we get out our calculator. And if you punch in the numbers like I did, you get a height of 110 meters. And it was 110.1, but 110 meters is going to get us the correct answer. Question 64. Calculate the speed of the roller coaster at the bottom of the hill. Show all work, including equation and substitution with units, for two points. So let's just list our knowns again. I like this. Mass is 290 kilograms. Its kinetic energy is going to be 3.13 times 10 to the 5 joules. And its initial velocity was equal to zero. And that's good. And we want to know its uh, final velocity. Well, the equation for uh, kinetic energy, uh, kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. So we can say that the kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. We're going to do algebra to solve for velocity. I like getting rid of the 1 half right away. Multiply both sides by 2. 2 times kinetic energy divided by mass. We want to get rid of the mass. And, uh, and we've got to take the square root of it. And that's going to be equal to our velocity. So the square root of 2 times 3.13 times 10 to the 5 joules divided by 
290 kilograms. Calculator time. And if you hit your square root button like you were supposed to, you come up with a velocity of 46.4 meters per second. That looks good. And question 65. Calculate the magnitude of the average acceleration of the roller coaster as it descends to the bottom of the hill. All right, average acceleration will be the next problem. Well, let's go. Velocity initial was zero. Mass was 290 kilograms. Yeah, I know you don't need all of this stuff, but I like listing it. Kinetic energy was 3.13 times 10 to the 5 joules. Uh, velocity final was 46.4 meters per second. The time required to do this was, uh, let's see, go back to that, uh, 5.3 seconds. And, uh, and we found some other stuff, but that might be enough. Formula for acceleration is change in velocity over time. So we write that acceleration is change in velocity over time. Change in velocity is velocity final minus velocity initial. Change in anything is what you got minus what you started with. So we can write acceleration is equal to velocity final minus velocity initial all over time. And we plug in with uh, our units. Uh, 46.4 meters per second minus zero divided by 5.3 seconds will be equal to our acceleration. One more time with the calculator. And I come up with an acceleration of 8.7 meters per second per second, or meters per second squared, meters per second per second. And uh, this would be the answer. Now, incidentally, if you somehow make a mistake here, forget to take the square root or whatever, you'll lose a point there. But if you then use that velocity properly here, you'll get both points. That's why it's so important to show all of your work on these problems. I think we've got enough time to do the last two problems. Let's see. We've got uh, a rope is attached to weight to produce tension. You've got, uh, it's draped over a hook. You've got a drill that's turning at 20 hertz of frequency and it's producing a standing wave and it looks like uh, three meters is the length of that standing wave. So let's read question 66. Determine the wavelength, the length of the wave, uh, producing the standing wave for one point. Well, that's going to be three meters. And let's see the last. Calculate the speed of the wave in the rope. Show your work including equation and substitution. Well, here I know that the wavelength is 3 meters. The frequency was given to me as 20 hertz. And I'm looking for velocity. Let's find this. Formula for velocity, frequency times wavelength. Velocity equals frequency times wavelength. Velocity equals 20 hertz times 3 meters. Velocity is equal to 60 meters per second. Now, for units, as long as we have a few seconds, I'll review that. Uh, velocity is 20 hertz, and hertz is waves per second. Wavelength is 3 meters per wave. So if you're looking at the units, you would see that waves would cancel out, you'd be left with meters per second, which is units of velocity. So that's how the units work out. That was fun.